forward facing sonar, live imaging, spotlighting, whatever you call it, there's no denying the impact it's had within the fishing community. Some consider it cheating. Got him. Unfair advantage. Ready? Get him. Ah! <laughs> yeah! And a threat to the very integrity of the sport. Others say it's nothing more than a continuation of technological progress already decades in the making. Flashers, sonar, GPS mapping, high definition sonar, side imaging. How disruptive is forward facing technology? Have we entered a brave new world? And if so, are we going to miss the old one? Why, yes, it is August, just barely past the first week, not even double digits into August yet. And it's cold, 40 some degrees, this morning anyway. It started in the 40s. So I'm stuck in the bay and I figured, let's just try to target purely big marks. Just see what we can do with big fish. going to be stuck in the bay. Oh, there's a suspended one I think I kind of wanted there. Ooh, gosh, I should almost be able to cast at that. I better. Try to get the most out of it. Go big or go home. Did I hit it? I'm a little short. Did he see it? I don't know if he saw it. He's swimming the other way. Okay, is that camera working now? Sometimes filming fishing is tough. Somehow or another, I don't know, either didn't hit the button or I lost that clip somehow. But the first fish of the day is an absolute stun. <laughs> That's probably a five, five and a half pounder. There you go. <sighs> Dang it. That fish was on the bottom in like 24 feet right below a ledge not suspended all right we're gonna try to find some more and do it with the camera on this time the debate over forward-facing sonar reaches the highest volume on the walleye tournament trail and other tournament trails like the bass masters for obvious reasons one there's money involved but also i think one of the biggest strengths of forward-facing sonar is specifically identifying big fish that you want to target for a tournament basically the big one that i caught the mark looked about the same size as a normal walleye mark would shallower, but it was, you know, 20 some feet. So I'm starting to get the sense of calibration for mark size. Oh, right there. Let's try it though. I think those are nice fish too. Oh, I casted the shorter ones and now I see some big ones at 60. Oh, there we go. There we go. That looks juicy right there. If I got my bait in there, I don't know if I did. Oh, I don't know if those are as big, but, and I'm not necessarily going by the size of the blah, the blip, the blob. I'm trying to determine how bright they are, how glowy. Let's say you see a fish on the bottom at 30 feet. I'm sure their size will also be bigger. He just looks like a glowing star. He's big. Bright shining stars. If I can just coax that in there just right. It's a big fish, whatever it is. Do you see it? Oh yeah, he sees it. Heck yeah. He's falling too. Come on. Going down to it. Oh, do it. Bite it. Just bite it, you don't. That was a big fish up shallower that saw it, followed it. Why couldn't we get it to bite? They're in here. We got one good one and I'm seeing more. The list of tournament anglers that exclusively use live scope grows longer every single day. But are they really nothing without it or are they great anglers with strong skills and strong instincts that just happen to find a tool that perfectly complements their fishing style? 
you still have to locate the fish, which I don't think is a strength of live scope. It's a tough cast to make in the wind. Did we get it? Yeah, it looks like it's kind of falling for me. Let's see if they react. disappeared or they're hunting it or it's so hard to tell if it's wind and you have to control your boat to use this thing well I'm trying to get closer to them and you have to make super accurate casts there's a big glower out there at 90 feet oh my god is that even a walleye do we even try this 90 feet into the wind no way we're never gonna get there 40 they seem to be engaged. Oh, what a tough cast. Now I understand how the pros are so good at this in tournament stuff. Oh, he's looking. He's looking hard. Take it. Sha poopy. And you constantly have to be directing, whether it's on your trolling motor or on a pole, to make sure that you can see what you need to see. Hard time keeping him on the screen to watch him chase it. Now where'd you go? Disappear faster than you show up. Swimming over there now. Are they different fish? Who's to know? I'm jogging backwards too fast. I just saw something. Oh no. Oh no. Set up on the spot. Hurry up, motor. This wind is making things really fun. Oh, there. Come on, show me my lure. Tell me I'm on it. So hard casting across the boat like that. I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> and the wind's just peeling out line like mad. I'm trying to let it fall on that spot, but it's so hard. This wind sucks. And then you have to choose the right bait and you have to present it well. I thought this lure was the deal after that first cast. It's like there's clouds of smelt down there and there's a fish right in the middle of it, 20 feet out. He's moving in that smelt. This should be a great bait option if that's what he's doing. They are stirring stuff up there though, look at that. Is it jig and crawler time in the afternoon? I don't know. Try a crawler over there, it's such a tough cat. Trying to land the bait on the mark and let just enough line come out in the wind to get the straight fall and not have a bunch of extra. But there's a lot of skill involved. If anything, I think live scope makes it more of a physical skill and a physical sport, and definitely skills that have to be practiced and mastered just like anything else. Cast a little bit ahead of him and swing it in. I closed the bail and started reeling a little bit. Try to get it to fall through him. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. And of course, in the end, you still have to make the fish bite. That's something LiveScope doesn't do for you. Now, if they came out with some kind of technology, like some sonic wave thing that would make fish hungry and make them react to your bait, yeah, I would be concerned about that. Three feet back. Notice it. Notice it. You notice it hardcore. There we go. Heavy engagement. Come on. This is it right here. They got to take, don't they? <gasps> no. The adage that, you know, some fish just won't bite truly is a, is a thing, I believe. What do we have here? One of them maybe saw it. That one looks like he might think about it. No. So much denial. We'll get him. This will happen. Just got to keep putting casts on the money, get him to engage. One of them's gonna make a mistake. Of course, some of the critics will say that relying on live scope will dull your natural fishing instincts and your skills, but in my opinion. Watching fish's behavior certain times of the year to certain baits, we really learned a crazy stupid amount. More than I ever have in my life. The stuff that you learn, I think, actually improves your instincts and gives you a better understanding of the fish. I was just working a fish right under the boat. Just dancing it right in front of his head, and eventually he took it. It was like ice fishing. I knew he wasn't a super big fish, but it was neat.
I was just bouncing it on the spot above his head like you were ice fishing and then doink. <laughs> there comes one. See if he doinks it. Just like the last one, just twitching in above his head. Re-entice him. He's looking up at it. You're not gonna bite like the other one, huh? Try to get him up off the bottom. There he comes. Doink it. We'll drop down between these two here. There you go. Come up here. Oh, he spooked that time. <laughs> yeah. Just like I'm eating. Oh, don't go away. Oh, coming from the side. Doink it. Missed it. Missed it. You saw that. Working to this close fish. I don't know. He's just thinking so hard. <laughs> Keeps circling back around. How many times are you going to do this? Yes, no. Yes, no. There he came to look at it. Chasing it. Chasing it. Maybe he's gonna take it right here. Maybe. Follow it all the way back to the boat. I just threw a jigging wrap on a big suspended fish and he followed it down. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I got that much on camera, but there he is right there. <laughs> he was suspended 10 feet up, threw the jigging wrap on him and he went straight down to the bottom right after it. I think this is a big walleye. Oh, he came in! <laughs> no! No! Will he bite it again? Oh my God, that is just heartbreaking. I've been throwing on those suspended marks all day and not seeing much reaction. That thing shot, ooh, there's a big one right there at 60. That thing shot straight down at that and grabbed it off the bottom. Oh my God. That was a giant walleye. Oh. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Why did he have to come loose? That is a heart. Breaker. Shoot. That was my fish. Now I know when I see those suspended marks, throw on them. That might have been the biggest wall I've had on all year. Why did he come loose? I don't know if that's the same stuff or if that's carp now, but that was what I was looking at. I'm going to try to get the cast on him. No reaction. 90 feet out, jeez. Looks like a good mark though. Keep an eye on him as we cruise up. Getting closer. Getting closer, where'd he go? Straight ahead of the boat, oh my God. 50 feet. Let's see if he reacts. I would say not really. Try one more cast. It's a big fish. We attacked them, stayed with them, basically badgered them. The adage that, you know, some fish just won't bite truly is a, is a thing, I believe. I do have to admit though that forward-facing sonar changes the way we fish specifically more than any other technology that I've ever seen before. So I do understand why it's getting a lot of attention compared to some of the other things that have come out in the past. I'm not the type of person that wants to just stare at a screen while I'm fishing the whole time. That's not really how I like to do things, but I'll admit it's hard not to look at the screen once you've seen a fish engage and you're watching your lure fall there. It's kind of enthralling. And because of that, I've caught fish doing things that I never really dreamt of doing in the past. Follow it. There he goes. Oh, heck yeah. 
Heavy follow. Bite it. Down like a rocket chip, didn't take it. Attacking and chasing and chasing and chasing suspended marks was huge for us. Try to swim bait. That's my fish, so. We, I literally would follow him until he either ate or left. Let's see if we'll take the jigging around the second time. Maybe work it above his head. And just know what's my boy. 20 feet down over 30. Oh, he's chasing it that way. Got him. Jigging wrap right above his head. That was freaking awesome. Freaking awesome. <laughs> That's something I've never done before. It's a stud too. If I was able to get that suspended fish to bite, he was 26 plus every single time. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Stay on. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> we followed it down to the bottom the first time, and then I worked it right above his head, and he chased it and hit it in the middle of the water column. That is freaking awesome. I love that stuff. Since it does change the way we fish so much though, I think the risk to a lot of the new users is to fish too differently. For example, when they see that first fish or two kind of notice their lure and engage on them, it's very easy to get stuck on those fish and not leave. But you have to remember, most fish in reality don't bite. The adage that, you know, some fish just won't bite. It's good to make a fish in casts and present your bait effectively and learn from their behavior, but if say one out of 20 fish actually bite in the end, that means you still have to get your bait in front of 100 fish to catch five. So just like you would if you were fan casting or trolling or something else, you need to remember most fish don't bite and you gotta get a bait in front of a lot of them and keep moving along to make this thing really work for you. Oh. I went all the way back to the end of this structure to go work it upwind again and just look for marks. That's what I was hoping for. We're just going to look for marks as we cruise up into the wind. Preferably those suspended ones. So I got the thing angled like 45 degree up and out. Going right up the line again. How big is that close one? Jigging wrap shows up real nice. Boom. Straight to bottom. Instant follow. Something about dropping that bait right past a fish's face just really gets them going. Kind of little fish on the ledge. There's that one big one. You see all the bait down there right here too. They're just hanging around that bait. Got the littler one. Or is he not so little? Maybe he's not as little as I thought. Oh, thought he was smaller, thought he was smaller, not a bad fish, not a bad fish, stay on there, it's a nice fat walleye, up there a little shallower, I like that, 24-ish feet, and I did get my jig tracking a little better, there's the reaction. I went with uh, six or seven clicks forward instead of the standard forward position. And that seems to help a little bit seeing that stuff brighter. Got him, got him. Let's make sure this one's a little tighter. Oh, this could be a good fish too. I don't know if that showed up on the Mega Live or not, but it's definitely a good fish. Come on. We lost a big one. We had a big one off camera. We need to land one to end this day. It is 302. 
This could be the day ender for big walleyes. Come on, come on. It's not as big as I thought, he's just a little side hook. <laughs> it's a nice fish. Came off. And now one might say, what was that other giant walleye, side hooked walleye? That was the largest suspended mark I've seen all day. Followed it down like a rocket ship and <laughs> rattled it. So the answer to that is no. Ultimately for me, I'm excited to learn a lot more about it to understand how I can find some different bites that I wouldn't have found before or trigger new reactions from fish that I didn't think were possible. But I still want to just get it to the point where it's integrated with the rest of my process and it becomes just another tool that I use. I don't want it to be the only thing I rely on personally. Whether or not you decide to implement one of these forward-facing sonar technologies, of course, is totally up to you, but I'm gonna tell you, it's not going away anytime soon. How much it actually changes our sport and whether those changes are good or bad, well, I'm sure that conversation won't stop anytime soon, no matter what I say here. There he is right there. Follow it. I want to follow this fish. 